What is going on ladies and gentlemen? In this video, I am going to give you a summary of my second tactical games which was last weekend up in upstate New Hampshire like Dalton, New Hampshire at the Ridgeline Training Center, Defense Center, whatever the official name is. So I'm going to go over what exactly tactical, tactical games is. I'm going to go uh, over the event and what I thought of it overall. The different divisions and the different requirements, the gear that I used and then at the end, actually throughout this video, there's going to be so much ammunition for you guys to make fun of me in the comment section. If you are one of my friends and you like to tease me, there's going to be a lot of that. We're going to have a few drinks as well. Uh, I have this Blue Chair Bay rum. They make this cream rum and there's five different flavors. I know it's super girly, so you can make fun of me, but it's really, really good. What we're going to do first, we're going to go through the gear first because I want to go through the gear and then lock up the gun so I can have a few drinks. So you safety Nazis, calm down Kevin and Karen. <laughs> Don't get on me too bad. All right, as far as Air Pro, I wore my Walkers in-air, Walker Silencer 2.0 in-air because over the ear tend to get snagged with a sling, so I went with the in-air. Air eye protection, I don't know what I had. Uh, probably ESS Eye Pro. That's probably the Eye Pro I had on. A plate carrier. Obviously, I ran my Prime Armor uh, plate carrier. They are one of the sponsors of the channel, so why wouldn't I? Plus, the padding in here is extremely comfortable, so when you're wearing it for a long time and carrying heavy things, it is the perfect plate carrier for that. I could not rock the plate, uh, the Prime Armor plates because their plates are too light. You need to have, for men, at least 15 pounds uh, in your plate carrier slick. So uh, that is the plate carrier I ran. As far as my belt, I'll pull up a picture of it here for you so you can see. I usually rock a Snake Eater tactical belt. Retention is good. I like the belt. It doesn't match, but uh, the belt overall is very, very good. I switched to a Safari Land holster because I wanted that extra retention. I have my favorite tee on, a pair of very stretchy, comfy, light pants because you're doing a lot of uh, interesting exercises. And then as far as my shoes, I had some A solo hiking, running type kicks. My pistol is my SIG X5 Legion, big old heavy gun. I shot it really, really well, except for the last event. I think the last event I was so tired, I was dropping the shots really, really low. But the rest of the week, my pistol shooting was on point. It has a loophole Delta Point Pro, and I'm happy to say the Tactical Games finally allows optics on pistols, which was great. And then I also have an Enforce Wild 2 on here. Not that I needed a light at all, but it was already on there. Now, as far as a rifle, this is nothing fancy, just a 16-inch beater rifle. I put it together with like kind of spare parts that I had. Uh, most of the parts on here are very, very low quality, except for the heart of the rifle. It has a very nice ballistic advantage barrel. It has an extremely nice nickel boron aero precision uh, BCG, a very, very nice hyperfire trigger, Hollison dot and magnifier and the enforce light out at the end. Blue force gear sling if you care. Uh, sling manipulation is very important at the tactical game so if you are going to go get very very comfortable of swimming in and out of your sling and doing different things. Uh, I have next games I'm going to do two things. I am going to put a low power variable optic on there because I am extremely blind and reaching out to distance was very very hard for me and I think I'm going to get a shorter barrel um, the 16 inch barrel is just way overkill for that. And I think I'm going to go down somewhere around 12 and a half inches. Hang on one second. Let me lock these guns. up. So the guns are locked up and let's talk about what the tactical games is. I call it CrossFit with guns or a tough model with guns, but honestly, it's a lot more than just an, uh, CrossFit with guns. Cheers. Mmm. That is so good. Hope you guys are drinking with me. Banana is good. There's another flavor that's even better. Mango. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, climbing obstacles, running, moving with heavy equipment, rucking, shooting from unconventional positions. They always have some sort of physical and mental challenge. You kind of have an idea what you get into, but you never know exactly. They always have some surprises for you. It is a two-day event. Each day has three battles or three events in that. Uh, in, in each day, typically you're going to see one that's a long movement or a long running where you're going to be running a mile to three to sometimes five. Uh, another one that's going to have you doing a heavy movement where you're going to be lifting very heavy sandbags or weights or again, you don't know exactly what you're getting into. And the third one is typically some sort of dynamic movement. Uh, farmer carries, wheelbarrow, something like that. So the people who do well are not only good athletes, well-rounded, uh, strong enough 
athletic enough, can run, can move, can shoot, just well-rounded athlete. So if you read this point, if you're thinking, I am not an elite athlete and a well-rounded athlete, that's okay. There's a lot of ways you can get involved. You can simply just volunteer. If you want to see what it's like, go volunteer. They always need and appreciate volunteers, and you can get an idea of what's what it's all about. You can sign up for a one-day event called a skirmish. It's kind of like a practice event, so you can, again, just get your feet wet. You can also sign up for the novice division. The novice division, I'll go over the divisions in a second, is the lowest entry level. The weight's a little bit lighter. They let you skip certain things if you can't do it. It's a great way to get introduced to the tactical games if you don't know where you rank. I think most people out there who are interested in doing the tactical games and are reasonably fit could get into the intermediate division. I would say if you can run three miles and you can pick up 100, 150 pounds, sandbags, something like that, you'd probably be okay. Most important, you need to be safe with a firearm in a stressful or uh, exhausted manner and uh, check your ego because unless you're an elite athlete, you are not gonna go there and win. Uh, the highest division is called the elite division. The only thing I'll say is if you are gonna consider getting in the elite division, make sure you are an elite athlete. What they don't wanna hear is, I can't pick up a 200 pound sandbag. If you sign up for the elite division, you better be an elite athlete. Before we get into the different divisions, let me tell you guys why I am having a few drinks. <laughs> a couple of reasons. I just had the tactical games this past weekend, and my mind and my body and my soul is crushed. No. Um, one of my very, very good friends uh, was found dead in his car yesterday. His name was Anthony. And I uh, knew him for a long time. Kind of grew apart over the past few years as we got older. Uh, but someone I knew for a long time and was very, very close with. So. Uh, Salute, brother. All right, now that I got that off my chest, these are the divisions. Women's intermediate, women's elite. Um, if you are a natural born woman, you can get into either one of those. Novice is a basic division for men. Men's intermediate, and then they have men's intermediate optics, which I was very happy they added because I'm all about the pistol red dots. Hopefully in the future, they will allow pistol red dots uh, in any division, that would be dope, but I'm happy that it, they added it at least. Men's masters from 40 to 50, you have to be a, men between, a man between 40 and 50, but they lift the same weight as the elite athletes. That's why I didn't get into the men's masters, even though I'm over 40. Um, I'm not strong enough, I'm not in that good enough shape. There's men's masters, which is for men over 50, and they, weigh, they lift the same weight as the intermediates which I did when I'm over 50, I'll probably join that. And then there is the men's elite. And again, you better be an elite athlete if you join that category. So there's the division, simple as that. Now let's get in to the event last weekend. I know I'm looking down, I'm talking a lot. I'm sorry guys. Uh, super smooth, super professional. Uh, the first event I went to had a couple issues, minor, minor, minor issues. This event was awesome, super smooth. Three weeks before the event, they lost their original venue. And I would have panicked if I was there. Imagine having to deal with that three weeks before the event's going to take place. It was supposed to be at the SIG Academy. Something happened. I don't know what. And they very quickly found a new venue. And I guarantee you, if you ask anybody at this games, nobody would have known or guessed that they only had three weeks to plan uh, this event at this new venue. It was smooth. It was professional. The courses were challenging. Uh, the venue was nice. The porta potties were spotless. I mean, spotless. Spotless clean. I've never seen porta potty so nice. That was one of the few complaints I had about my first tactical games. I mean, it was amazing. The events events were run well. Super challenging. Uh, I had like 30 people that I'm friendly with, some friends, close friends, acquaintances that came. So it was really cool to have such a big group of people. I had several people who I was very close with come and cheer me on. And when you're sucking wind and you're tired, having someone to cheer you on is great. I had a couple people who also gave me a lot of tips. Uh, a couple friends who know once the event starts, I go 100 miles an hour and I need to pace myself. So it's nice to have friends there to remind me uh, to pace myself. Oh, so more ammunition for you guys to make fun of me. On the three mile run, I took a wrong turn. Not that three miles isn't long enough with a plate carrier, rifle, and pistol. I took a wrong turn. So my, let's drink to this. My three mile run ended up being a six and a half mile run. So for a little bit, I was kind of aggravated and kind of upset because I thought the turn wasn't marked well enough. The, the, the 
and I, I thought I went the wrong way, not because of my own fault. But then 140 shooters went the right way, and I was the only one who went the wrong way. So that killed my time for the weekend. It killed my calves for the weekend, because you're out in New Hampshire, all the hills. But uh, I couldn't be mad, because I was the only one who did it. So, oh well. <laughs> Salute again. All right, before I get into the specific battles and drink a little bit more, let me quickly talk about the pros and the cons of the event. Uh, there's nothing like tactical games. That's why I like it so much. That's why I will definitely do another one. I will prepare much better and uh, be more prepared next time. I definitely was not physically uh, as physically prepared as I should have been, but there's nothing like it. It's super challenging. It's super fun. The people who uh, come to these events are just awesome. Like there's people I'm competing with and the second I'm done competing against them, they're encouraging you and cha uh, cheering you on and they're awesome. The people who run this event, the people who run the tactical games are awesome. Like Jared, I believe his name is, the guy who owns it. Sarah seems to be like the, the one who handles everything and runs everything. Jake is very high up in there as well. And there's a lot of guys who help out as well. And everyone's just great. I mean, awesome, happy, helpful, good dudes and uh, dudes and dudettes, and they're just really, really good people. There's a lot of dogs who attend the event. One of them was Molly. I'll see if I can find a picture of Molly because that was my favorite part of the tactical games. Getting kisses by a pit bull, what's better than that? I had a ton of gummy bears. I love gummy bears, and I had a bunch of friends challenging, cheering me on. As far as cons, I have zero cons this time. Absolutely none. My two cons last time was not being able to run optic in the pistol on my pistol, and they fixed that. Again, I'd love to see it in all divisions, but I'm happy with the changes they made. The porta potties in Pennsylvania were disgusting, uh, to the point where people had to get sticks and knock the poop down so they didn't hit their butt as they went to the bathroom. It was pretty gross. Uh, the porta potties in New Hampshire were spotlessly clean. I've never seen porta potties <laughs> so clean. All right, the last thing I want to talk about, I know this is a long video, is the battles. If you're not interested in hearing the specifics of each battle, no big deal. Before you go, just drop me a like, maybe a comment, subscribe to the channel if you think I deserve it. I know this is not my best video, and I know it's a little different, but uh, several people asked me to make this video, so I said, why not? So before I get into the battles, why not have one more shot? <clears throat> Excuse me. Cheers. All right. All right, the fun part. First battle of the weekend was the one I did the worst on. Start in a car, you had four targets up on a hill. Uh, about 100 yards, 150, 200, 300, in that area. Don't quote me, I don't remember the exact distances. You took 24 shots from inside this little Ford Fiesta type car, come out and do a magazine exchange from the back of the car, shoot 24 more rounds at those same targets at different distances. And uh, two, there was three targets, three targets, three targets, three targets, two shots at each for a total of 48. I did terrible. The targets that were 100 yards away, I hit most of them. Anything past that, I could not see with my red dot. I have terrible vision. I know I've said it in many, many videos, but I have terrible vision. Couldn't see the target, so I will, will be putting an LPVO, LPVO on my rifle to help me out. Uh, the second part, you run to another bay, and you did some pistol shooting, and this was the most fun drill uh, event battle we did all weekend. You have five targets along the left wall, five targets along the back berm, five targets along the right berm. You have three magazines of 10 two shots on each target, and you had to be moving at all times. If you stopped moving, they made you do shuttle shuttle runs. So two, two rounds, two rounds, two rounds, two rounds as you move, reload, two rounds, two rounds, two rounds, two rounds as you move, reload, same thing on the back. I shot that clean, I didn't miss any of the targets, and I didn't have to do any shuttle runs. After that, stow all your guns, and you go on the three mile hike through the very steep mountains, and that's where I made a mistake and got lost. And they were very, very concerned <laughs> because everyone's coming back, and I took obviously twice as long, and everyone's like, where's Tiberius, what's going on? And they were getting nervous, and I didn't have cell phone coverage to call, but once I got cell phone coverage back, I, uh, I called and let them know, hey, I'm not like <laughs> mauled by a bear, I just took a wrong turn and I still have a few more miles to get back. Man, I heard it so much from all my friends and all the people who run the tactical games and I am absolutely okay with it because if it was somebody else, if it was one of my buddies, I would get on them so bad for making that dumb mistake. But totally killed my time for the weekend and totally killed my calves. My calves are on fire, tight all weekend, but uh, whatever. I went there to have fun, not trying to win. So, all right, second event was like a racetrack. 
Um, you start off, sorry, my eyes are all messed up. You start off by running a lap around the racetrack. You shoot some rifle from like a supported chain. There's a chain, you can shoot your rifle from supported. Store your rifle, shoot your pistol. It was like 10, 12, everything was like 10, 12 rounds. I don't remember the exact amount. You shot your pistol through a barricade. Stole the pistol, you pick up a wheelbarrow, run that wheelbarrow around that same racetrack, same rifle shooting, same pistol shooting, move the weight from the wheelbarrow to the sled, drag your sled around the same racetrack and the sled. I mean, the sleds suck. Sleds are very, very hard. Um, the one thing I forgot to mention earlier is if you go up to a higher division like Elite, um, you do have every challenge is going to be harder. Uh, everything's going to have more weight to it. So the wheelbarrow has more weight, the sled has more weight, the sandbags are heavier, etc. etc. So once you do your rifle and your pistol shooting, uh, that was it. It was just three trips around and then you were done. You touched the wheelbarrow and the time ended. That was one of the few events that I actually finished. All right. Third event of the day was the heavy lifting stage, and this one was tough. Uh, they had a yoke. If you guys don't know what a yoke is, I think I have a picture of it. I'll try to put it up here if I do. You had three, excuse me, three sandbags, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 150 pounds. You run up to the yoke, you throw the 50 pound over five times, you throw the third, uh, 100 pound sandbag over three times, pick up the 50 pound, run down to the firing line, shoot your rifle, shoot your pistol again, 10, 12 rounds. Pick up the 50 pound sandbag, run back. 50 pound sandbag over the yoke five times, 100 pound sandbag over the yoke three times. At this point, I'm flying. I'm way ahead of everyone. I'm lapping everyone. I'm like, I'm in my mind, I'm getting cocky, right? I'm like, I'm gonna finish this event. This is gonna be two events in a row. I'm gonna finish, it's gonna be great. I got to that 150 pound sandbag and it was like, no, 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 Tiberius. You are not finishing this event. Um, I guess it wasn't strong enough. Definitely didn't have the right technique. I do some sandbag works, but these are like round sandbags without any handles and they were very hard to get a grip on. And being winded from everything else we did, I really struggled with it. it took me a minute to kind of get under it and figure it out. And I got it up and I got it over the bar and that was tough. Picked up the 100 pound sandbag, ran to the firing line, did my shooting of my rifle, shooting of my pistol, picked up the 100 pound sandbag, brought it back. And you had to do the 50 pound sandbag five times over, the 100 pound sandbag three times over, and then the damn 100 pound sandbag. I managed, took me like good 30 seconds, managed to pick it up, got it over the bar. That was brutal. Now I have to pick up the 100 pound sandbag and bring it to the firing line. And I was not looking forward to that. I got it up and I knew if I put it down, I would have been screwed. If I didn't make it all the way there and I dropped it. So I was not putting it down. I was screaming like, ah, it was heavy, but I knew if I put it down, I'd be screwed. So I made it to the firing line. I did my shooting. And at this point, my shooting was terrible. Absolutely terrible. I managed to get the 100 pound sandbag back up, brought it back to the firing line and um, the starting line. And that's where the time ended. That, wow, that was probably, that was the second toughest battle of the weekend. And it was so difficult. We need another shot. All right, last thing we have to talk about is the three battles of the second day. It was a uh, heavy movement, excuse me, more like a dynamic movement. You had farmer's carry, an axle bar, and a 50 pound sandbag. I think the farmer's carry was like 110 pounds. Axle bar was probably 60-ish, don't quote me on that. Uh, when, when you start, you pick up the farmer's carry, you go from the starting line to the firing line, 50 yards maybe, I don't know. You shoot your pistol, you shoot your rifle, I shot both of them really, really well, especially the pistol, but I think this is the event where they hung up three targets and there's three rounds and you're supposed to shoot your pistol uh, at one target and then the second round, the second target and the third target, uh, the third round, the third target and I shot them all on the first. I think this was the event that that happened. It may have been another one, but I shot them all on one target instead of the second and the third. So everything was misses because I shot the wrong target. and. I didn't miss at all with my pistol, but I shot the wrong target, so they counted as misses. Anyway, you bring the farmer's carry down, put him down, do your pistol and rifle shooting, pick up the farmer's carry, bring him back. Pick up that axle bar, and you had to carry it in the front rack position up here. You bring it to the uh, firing line, put it down, do your shooting, pick it back up, bring it back to the firing line. At this point, you need to bring all three impl implements back to the firing line. You have to bring the farmer's carry, the axle and the sandbag. I did it in three trips. Some people out there were a beast in doing it in two trips. They had it on the back or they looped the sand, the loop on the sandbag around their wrist in the farmer's carry. 
I took three trips. Um, so you bring all three down, you do your shooting, then you have to bring all three back, and then that is the end of that event. So that one wasn't too, too bad. Farmer's carry was a little heavy for me, but uh, I did finish that one as well. My shooting was great. Again, I think that was the event. I just shot the wrong target like an idiot. Second battle of the day was sprints. I'm talking sprints and sprints and sprints and sprints and more sprints. We did 24 sprints. It was a total of 1,200 meters we ran, which I think is about a mile, right? Maybe. Um, so anyway, you, you run the, f I don't know, it was 50, 100 yards, whatever it was, and you had your pistol and your rifle stowed on a barrel. You picked up either one, you took two shots. Put it down, ran back to the uh, starting line, touched the cone, ran back to the firing line, and you shot two shots. And you did that back and forth 24 times. And this is when my friends were telling me, slow down, pace myself, okay, pick up speed a little, okay, go a little faster. That was priceless because I would have went like 100% out of the gate and I would have been dead in the middle. So them telling me to pace it was good. but. Everybody finished this event pretty much. It wasn't all that bad. I don't mind running and stopping, running and stopping. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, this is the event that I shot the wrong target. So my pistol shooting was on point. I, I think all 24 shots of pistol on this event went into that little target, but I shot the wrong one. So I only got credit for eight instead of 24 like I was supposed to, but two mental mistakes that weekend. All right, last battle of the weekend was by far the toughest one. This was even tougher than the 7.5 mile run, no doubt. So you started with that yoke again, okay? And there's a 50 pound sandbag. You had to do a burpee over the sandbag. You had to pick up the sandbag, throw it over the bar of the yoke. Then you had to jump your butt over that yoke. And you had to do that five times. Burpee, bag, body, burpee, bag, body, five times. Once you do that five times, you have to pick up the whole yoke. I believe it weighs 185 pounds, that's what it said online. Somebody said 125, but it felt a lot heavier than that. You have to pick up the whole yoke, bring it down to the firing line, run back, get your sandbag, bring that to the firing line. You do your rifle shooting, you do your pistol shooting, five more burpees, bag, body, so you can move your yoke, move your yoke, move your sandbag, run back to the firing line, shoot your rifle, shoot your pistol, and then you repeated that whole process a second time. So you go back to the yoke, you do your five burpees, sandbag body over, you carry the yoke down to the firing line, you carry your sandbag down to the firing line, you do your shooting, another set of burpees, bag, body over the bar five times, then you bring the yoke back, and that's when time ran out. So I was so close to finishing that one. Uh, I just ran out of town, time at the end. And again, the pistol rifle was all 10, 12 rounds each on a small little piece of paper. Um, so that was by far the hardest uh, battle of the week in my opinion. Maybe the 150 pound sandbag, that sucked too. <laughs> so I did terrible, absolutely terrible. Part of it, I didn't prepare as well as I should have. Part of it was I went for a six and a half mile, seven mile hike in the woods. And part of it is my rifle shooting at distance was horrific. Um, so I am going to uh, get a low power variable optic. I'm gonna do a better job preparing myself physically for strength and cardio for the next event. And hopefully I will do a lot better in the next event. So you guys wanna hear where I came in. Hopefully I've been talking so long that nobody else is watching anymore. Out of 59 shooters in the intermediate division, I came in 38th. My goal is to come in the top half. And that doesn't sound that bad, but I technically was in the intermediate optics division. So if you look at intermediate overall, 38 out of 59th is okay. Out of the 10 people in the intermediate optics division, I came in 10th, I came in dead last. Some of the dudes in the intermediate optic division were just beast animals and I couldn't keep up with them. So uh, I'm gonna get the one to eight magnified optic. I have my buddy Dan. Uh, working on a fitness plan with me and my friend Raynan's wife is going to put some help for a uh, uh, She's a nutritionist. So she's going to put some things together for my nutrition Probably wouldn't approve of this rum. Oh, no, this is the last shot and then it's all gone She probably won't approve of me drinking this rum, but she hasn't given me my nutrition plan yet So it doesn't matter. All right, I'm done talking. This is probably like a 45 minute video like nothing fancy Thank you guys for watching. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. This is probably the worst video I've ever put out. Actually, my first videos were terrible. Absolutely terrible. So those were probably worse. But for some reason, if you still think I deserve it, drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel. And if you do that, I promise my other videos will be better. Salute.